Simplified Chaos, Episode 98. Life is beautiful and full of chaos. And it can get slightly out of hand if that shit's not tamed. We're here to share how to simplify the little things to help you lead a more intentional life. This is Simplified Chaos. Hey, wonderful friends. Welcome to Simplify Chaos. This is Jillian, one of your hosts, and I'm with my co-host and husband, Nicholas. What's going on, folks? Hope you all are having an amazing Thanksgiving day, because that's when this episode's coming out, and hope you are having a great week as well. Or hopping. (laughs) Jesus, I can't talk. Hopping. I was going to say having a gravy weekend. Oh, God. Mm. Wow. The puns are coming. Of course they are. Gravy's everything, baby. I mean... I'm definitely going to smother all my shit in gravy today. I, it has to be homemade. Yeah, oh, duh. Canned gravies. No, sorry. I'm I'm a snob. I yeah, we're a little bougie gravies. here. We are very bougie. <laughs> when it comes to our gravy. Homemade everything. That's right. We've got another <laughs> excellent episode for you all today. Jilly, what are we diving into? Let's get really grateful today. Like, yeah. Like uber grateful. Seems like the right time to do that the perfect time yeah so we'll do that and we might as well start with what we're grateful for this week a lot of gratitude coming in it's just 100 (laughs) percent gratitude this episode so jilly this week what are you grateful for and then we'll dive into what we're grateful for this year sounds sounds fantastic uh i am grateful for having a bathtub well, bathtubs are nice. They are, and we used to have. A I bath- don't use a bathtub. <laughs> you don't. I and don't. I, you know, it's actually a great. I wonder what the statistic is and how many men take baths. I don't think a lot. I'm now. I want to dive deeper into that. Like, I wonder why. Um, yeah. So I'm going to just table that for now and just think about that later because <laughs> I'm not a man. I don't want to. I don't have to worry about that. Got to get in a man's head. Um, so we used to have a bathroom in our bathroom and then we... A bathtub. Re- bathtub, excuse me. I said bathroom in a bathroom, didn't yep. I? We used to have a bathtub and then Have you we- been drinking tonight, Jilly? Just a couple cocktails. Got no it. Deal. Um, but my mind's feeling clear, you know, clear and creative. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we used to have a bathtub and then we got it, uh, renovated and have this really nice shower, but we still managed to keep the bathtub in our other bathroom. It's also got renovated into just a nice soaker tub, just a little bit deeper. A little bit deeper tub, yeah. But I'm so happy that we have one tub in the house because I've been kind of needing some like soaker nights more than more than ever, just to relax, force myself it's therapeutic to slow down and just not be busy all the time. So. Uh, my sister brought home some really cool bath bombs from like a local shop in Boonesboro, Maryland, because she went there um, this past weekend. And I threw that bath bomb in there, lit a candle, turned off the lights, uh, played some kind of indie folk music on uh, Pandora. And I just had like 10 minutes. Was that of- tonight? Yeah. Oh, no shit. You were putting Lucille to sleep, which I'm also grateful for. And I was able to take a bath and I just zoned out for about 10 minutes and I, I feel refreshed and ready to go. Podcast ready. Awesome. What about you? What is it about baths that do it for, for you? It's really, okay. I'm just speaking from my perspective. Sure. I'm, I'm curious. Um, the water definitely is very calming. And then I think just the aesthetic of just the smell, um, the music, like candles, like I think it's the Were whole... Were you listening to Kenny G? I just told you I what know. I was listening to. <laughs> That's what I would listen to. A little, little songbird. Sexy music. A little yeah. songbird. Oh, God. Nee, 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 nee. Your saxophone is really impeccable. Know, it's not really good. It's not good. No. You should probably stop. <laughs> I'm going to so you can continue on your explanation. What, what was I explaining? Oh, what the aesthetic? I think it's just it. It tantalizes. Is that a word? Tantalizes. Thank you. It tantalizes. I think a lot of senses all at once, like um, touch, smell. F- you know, uh, I'm not tasting anything. <laughs> of <laughs> I hearing. Hope not. I, mean... I think it just it covers a lot of the senses in a very calming and relaxing way. Where and you're also 
forced to be by yourself, which I think is really needed for me. When I think when you maybe are a mom and have a job and are pulled in a lot of different directions and have responsibilities, it's nice to be forced to have that alone time with yourself, that little date with yourself. I have another question. Okay. What is a bath bomb? Um, it's basic. I saw these big ass balls, but I have yeah. no idea. So it's funny you asked that because I really didn't know what they were before either. And then I was looking at the ingredients and it's basically like Epsom salts. Um, it could uh, have essential oils. It's, it's all molded into a ball. And when you drop it in, it just like dissolves into the tub. Got it. Yeah. So that does it for you. I mean, it did it tonight. So <laughs> I guess my services are not needed. <laughs> Yeah, any more questions about bathing? No, 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 no. I'm I'm done with that. I just wanted to see how far we could take that. I like it. Yeah. We'll dive into why guys don't take bathtubs another time. (laughs) Sounds good. Or take baths. (laughs) What about you? (laughs) What are you grateful for besides showers? (laughs) I'm grateful for, we haven't said this in a while, and I'm always grateful for these, but especially this past weekend, I'm grateful for date nights. We had a most excellent date night this past weekend, if I might use a term from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I was going to say, you sound very uh, Keanu Reeves yeah. tonight. We don't know how much longer the state of Maryland is going to be open because of COVID, but we were like, F it, we're going to go out. And we did this really cool kind of contest. I, and I love this idea that you came up with. Last week, you were like, Nick. We're both going to make reservations at a restaurant, and then we're going to figure it out on which one we're going to go to. So we had a deadline to make a reservation by Tuesday evening, and we ended up doing this thing where we both made the reservations, and you were like, well, how are we going to figure this out? So we didn't tell each other the restaurant. I don't think we did until after we had this little contest, but we did a plank contest. (laughs) My core is not great (laughs) at all. So Jilly won, and she made a reservation at a place that we went to right about this time for the first time last year. It was, it was closer towards Christmas because the Washington Monument in Baltimore, not the D.C. Washington Monument, but the Washington Monument in Baltimore was all lit up last year when we went. This year, not so much. We're not, we're not quite at that point yet. But we went to this place called Topside, and... You know, it was actually kind of nice with it being like 25% or 50% capacity, whatever the, the regulations are in, in Baltimore City right now, because the place wasn't terribly crowded, which is plus and minus. You want to see a place like that doing really well and, and crowded every night, but at the same time, for peace of mind at, at this time, it, it's nice that it was not very crowded. And let me just tell you, the, the cocktails were on point. The food was amazing. The conversation and company was, you know, you, you sucky. Can't, yeah, it was horrible. It was horrible. Yeah, <laughs> but it was one of our longer date nights that I can remember, either even when we've been away or at home, and it was just really nice. Like we we talked about a lot of great things. We we talked about podcasts. We talked about life, and it was just it was a fun night. Like there was there was goofiness, there was seriousness, all in the same time, and it was. Uh, it was a date night to remember, so I'm, I'm glad we did this, and you know, it's one of the things that I'm certainly grateful for this year. We haven't been on very many date nights, but the ones that we do have, you know, just seem to be that much more cherishable. I guess if if I can use a word. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So yeah, good call, Jilly. All right. So we're gonna spread a little bit more gratitude here, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, Thanksgiving will be today, if you're listening, on Thursday when this comes out. So we thought, why not spread some gratitude about what's happening in our lives? Because I know there's probably a lot of other negativity and complaints about, you know, this year just sucking and I can't wait till it's over. And honestly, Mm -hmm. I just really want to appreciate all the amazing things that we have in our life and just shed shed some light on that. Yeah, I mean, it could be very easy for us to forget the good things that we still have in our lives when we have a a year as challenging as this year. Yeah. And a lot of us not being able to do the things that we've wanted to do. But at the same time, it's it's also one of those years where 
we've had a chance to really reflect on the things that we were doing and, and some of the things that we can change. And ultimately, we're using this as an opportunity for us to, to learn and grow so that when things get back to a little bit more normalcy, that we'll be able to hit the ground running and you know do the things that we want to do, but in a more purposeful way. And I thought, why... What better way than to share gratitude, kind of to focus on what we value and keep it in line with the things that we value in life and what we're always striving to live by kind of makes our decisions more purposeful and intentional and way easier to make. Yeah. If we just always go back to what we value. And so I thought, why not start? It's got to be a hell yeah, right, Jilly? Yeah. So I thought, like, why not start with? Um, family like to me that's our first value yeah I am grateful for family the support we have my mom still comes over and watches Lucille you know my sister and her um, husband live here with their little boy Reese so we are constantly surrounded with support and family and really good people and friends like it's just I'm so it's so nice to live in proximity to just support of people just really good people well, and, and even with my parents being two hours away, I mean, we we really leaned on them as well to, to help out with, you know, with uh, the whole work situation. Absolutely. And we had an amazing week with them and they were able to spend some time with their granddaughter. And, and so, you know, it's the support doesn't necessarily need to be a, a mile away or in your backyard. You know, it can be in another state. Absolutely. And it, it's just a, amazing uh, the, the the family we have, and yeah, I'm I'm certainly grateful for for that. I mean, you can't really put it into words. No. Just, just the the love that that this family has for each other, and that will be there for each other no matter what. So definitely super fortunate for that. Yes, uh, family is very important. Um, and shout out to Bev and Kev, who some great friends that we spent the weekend yeah. uh, Saturday with. So um, it's just so nice to get out of the house. And we were outdoors picnicking. And it's just great to have friends where, I don't know, I feel like we're just all positive, very open-minded. Mm-hmm. And it just it's just easy. We, we you know? just surround ourselves with people who share the same values as us, which you know makes mm-hmm. things extremely easy. And... You know, although that we haven't seen them in in a long time, it's just like picking back up where we left off. You know, the last time we hang out, and and you know, we just had an amazing time. You know, we were over there for you know two or three hours, and got to catch up, got to watch the kids run around and play, and and it was just an amazing time. And you know, we've been very fortunate that we do have friends and, and that we can still hang out with during these times and, and figure out interesting and fun ways to, to make things happen where that we're not in a house or, or in an area that's enclosed where, you know, raises the risk to, you know, even though we probably don't have it, but, you know, can't yeah. be too cautious at, at this time. So, you know, just finding fun ways to hang out with them and, and, and doing different activities that we may not otherwise do. Mm-hmm. So it, it's been fun. It's been an adventure and, you know, really, you know, again, I, I can't help but use the word fortunate on, on, you know, that that level of support and friendship as well. Um, so the other category that I wanted to cover um is I think travel and experiences. <laughs> it's it's different than it had, it's ever been, but I think goodness has it. We we're still doing it. We're still experiencing things. It may not be to the extreme or the far extent that we wanted it to be, but we're still venturing outside of our home in a safe way that it's comfortable for us to, you know, visit Virginia or visit small towns in Maryland or visit new parks. And I, I can't complain. Like I, I love that we're still, we're making it work. Yeah. You know, we're not letting this situation feel like a burden and, you know, we can't do that. And that sucks. It's like, well, what can we do? What do we have control over? And what do we feel comfortable with doing? So I, I'm extremely grateful for all the new experiences we've had since, you know, everything started. Yeah, I mean, if you pandemic. look back, if you look back on it, we were supposed to go to Colorado at the end of June and we ended up going to Charlottesville, Virginia, which we've never been to before. So 
you know, Colorado, we, we can always be there, but like Charlottesville was just a really cool place that is, is three hours, a three hour drive away from us that we can easily go to when we want to. And now we know that it's there Mm -hmm. and have plans to go there again relatively soon. Yeah. Um, looking forward to that. Um, excuse me, but yeah, I mean, it's been a very interesting year when it comes to, to travel because I can't remember canceling as many flights as we've canceled this year and, you know, having them set up. But we've built our bank of fly. I, I guess we have so many credits now on, mm-hmm. on Southwest that we're hoping that next year is just a uh, very nice year for travel where the airfare is already paid for and, and we uh, are able to explore a little bit more. But you're right. I mean, we've, we've got to, to see so much that Maryland has to offer and Virginia has to offer that we just didn't know that was there and have really got a chance to explore our, our area and really appreciate it a little bit more than, than what we did beforehand. And even we've had two weddings since the pandemic started yeah. and it's been so nice because weddings are such a huge event that they bring so many people together that otherwise probably wouldn't, but it, because the cause is like, we need to be there. It's it's a big event. It's a lifetime event. You know, it's hopefully one in a lifetime event. That, <laughs> exactly. You know, it brought so much of our family together for my sister's wedding. And it was so great to see my dad and my stepmom. Like, I just hadn't seen them in so long. And I've been just craving time with them since they live in Arizona. So just seeing, like, close family and friends be brought together for a reason about, like, love. And, you know, it's just... It makes it just makes your soul feel warm and cozy, and mm-hmm. that like there's nothing else going on wrong in the world. It just kind of confirms the importance of just like family, good people, and how it just nothing else seems to matter when everyone's together. Yeah, and you know, even looking back pre-pandemic, if you know, if we're looking back at 2020, we were very lucky at the very beginning of the year to travel to St. Louis and meet Michelle Knight and her husband, Ben, and their son, uh, Cal, and, you know, had a really great interview out there and was able to, you know, see a new city and, and hopefully, you know, meet some friends that, that we'll keep in touch with for a long time. Um we were able to do the rise up event for cystic fibrosis right before the whole COVID, you know, shut everything down. So, I mean, there were some things that we really got to do this year that, you know, really bring joy into our lives and and just having that opportunity, you look back on it and it's just like, yeah, well, it wasn't COVID at the time, but I mean, it could have been Mm -hmm. and things could have been a lot different at the beginning of the year, just, you know, depending on the timing. So, I mean, it really makes you look back and think about those events that, we were grateful for, for being able to do, um, even beforehand. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff that happened this year. I mean, I made a table that (laughs) is not complete yet, but (laughs) I did something, you know, it was, it was something different. And, you know, we've been able to also reallocate some of the money that we've been able to save because we're not going out to eat as much or we're not traveling as much and we're getting ready to do a, uh, renovation to our kitchen so i mean there's just you know you, you can look at this year in, in two different ways you can look at it like man this year really sucks it, you know, i haven't been able to do the x y and z but like we we completely approached it differently and, and we're like you know what we can't do x y z but we're gonna do a b c and it worked out tremendously like i wouldn't change this year it was it's a a year that's put us through a lot of adversity and we chose to to tackle it head on and things are great with us like you know couldn't be better yeah we're seeing the great i think that's a big part and i think one of the other things that you know we value is just growth yes. and i will say this this whole year has been one roller coaster of growth because <laughs> Um, just recently, you know, we kind of got a little hopeful planning on to go out to Arizona and, yeah. um, and then today we got the news that, you know, they really don't feel that, um, comfortable with us coming. And I completely understand like the safety issue and just with COVID, like I completely understand, yeah, um, absolutely. the concern. So, you know, I was really, I was really bummed out. But again, I think because we have cultivated this gratitude muscle, we've worked it so much that I'm like, 
there's a reason for this. This is happening for us, not to us. And now the week, this weekend is open, you know, um, we were supposed to go to Charleston and then that fell through. And then we were like, Hey, let's go see my dad. And then that fell through. So now it's like this blank canvas of opportunity for us to do something different and coming at it with gratitude, just that I'm grateful that we could have had the opportunity to go there Yeah, and that, Hey, we we both are safe and healthy. So that is something to be gr- very thankful for. Um, so yeah, this, this year has had a lot of roller coasters of things that have not necessarily gone the way we hoped, but I right. think coming at it with the mind of we have this, this is enough. What can we do with what we have has completely changed this experience. Yeah, it absolutely has. And like I said before, you know, we've really just rolled with everything and, you know, like you said, it could be that this weekend, something completely amazing happens. We don't, we don't know. We're, we're still writing that, uh, that chapter in in our (laughs) book here. Yeah. And so, you know, we'll just roll with it. I mean, you know, would we have loved to have gone out there? Absolutely. Um, but you know, we can always go back out there when, when things are a little bit safer and, you know, we'll get to see them soon enough. So thank goodness for technology. So we can like Google duo and hang out and zoom and all the above. Like, that's something that's been really a great tool at this time as well. That Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And for those of you listening today, I know that Zoom and some of the other platforms are doing away with their time limits so that you can have as long of video calls with your family. So, you know, kudos to those companies for, for doing something nice. And, you know, it, it speaks volumes. I mean, that's what, what it's all about right now is, you know, they understand that it's about being with family and stuff like that, and good for them. And this is not one of our values, but I, f- I find that we could probably in- intertwine it somehow. But I'm grateful for this podcast. I'm grateful that we... I was going to save that for last. I was Well, this is kind of like where the end one I was thinking, but I, I'm just grateful that... I don't want to say forces, but it pushes us to be together to just talk about what's happening in our life reflect over it find growth in it and then just share it out for whoever wants to listen yeah yeah. uh i'm just extremely grateful for this platform and being able to do that and then our community that listens and gives us feedback and we've connected with it's just been a really rad rad tool to use you all are amazing you know you're the the reason why we do this and you know it, it serves twofold like jill said it's it's for us, it helps us learn and grow, and oftentimes we're sharing revelations for the first time with each other on this podcast, but at the same time, we're hopefully sharing revelations with you, and that we're all learning and growing together, and, and I think I said this earlier, is that you know this year is certainly the opportunity for us to all learn and grow and, and become stronger as people, and you know we're going to come out of this whole thing, you know, just on top and and are going to be ready to hit the ground running when when things get a, a little bit back to to normalcy yeah yeah so yeah thank you guys we are truly grateful for you all do you have any resources you want to share with our listeners jilly i do of course you do so it's an oldie but a goodie but it is a blog post on my blog jilly's um, blog so back in the day i forgot what year i I wrote this blog post. It was when I read the Gratitude Diaries for the first time. Okay. Um, by Janice Kaplan, and I wrote a blog post. It was called uh, "Gratitude Equals Healthy Living," and I wrote, "Can you stop thrusting at me? You're I'm trying to get my workout in. Do you have to pelvic thrust while I'm going over a resource? Sorry, man, you really distracted me. Although I'm grateful for your genitals in my direction. Anyway, um, <laughs> I wrote just. When I read books, I'm like highlighting and writing them as I'm reading so I don't forget or I dog ear pages. Dog ear. Yeah. I was going to say, you're the queen of dog earing. I am. So I wrote, the blog post was like 30 quotes or 30 things that I read in the book that kind of resonated with me that I didn't want to forget. Okay. So I'm not going to read all 30, but I found like my top eight that I wanted to share. Ooh, top eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gratitude may have the highest connection to mental health and happiness of any of the personality traits studied. Agreed. Number two, researchers have found that people who write down three things they're grateful for every night improve their well-being and lower the risk for depression. I need to step my game up there. 
I've been doing it in the morning in our goal planner. I write at the very top of each day. Good job, Jilly. I like it. Yeah. It's like usually really simple things like drinking coffee and looking out the window or, you know, something with Lucille or it's, uh, yeah, it's really I, small, but yeah. it's becoming a habit now because I've been doing it Good for the job. past two weeks. All right. <laughs> um, number three, grateful people reframe whatever happens to them. They don't focus on what they're lacking, but make sure they see the good in what they have. Do that every week. Number four. Sometimes you need to stop your experiences completely and look at them anew. Not keep on repeating them like machines. Let the fresh air into your mind. This year certainly made us do that. Number five. We often look so long and regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the ones which open for us. Good call. Yeah. Number six. If you trade expectations for appreciation, the world instantly changes. Number seven, instead of being the mastery of misery, we can become experts at gratitude. And number eight, you think gratitude is something you express when everything is going well, but really (laughs) it's what you feel when everything is going against you. Again, exactly what's, what's going on this year. And it's definitely held, helped us become more resilient as people and, and to you know really try to see the good in everything. And, and it's made this year not so sucky. You know? Not at it, all. It can be very easy to say 2020 is a sucky year. I can't wait for 2021 and all that stuff. But, man, we hear that every year. So if 2021 is great and somebody says, I can't wait for tw- the end of 2021, we're like, remember 2020. Much different. I'm really confused because I think I know. You, I just you used said the a wrong lot of year. <laughs> yeah, well, no, like, well, next year's 2021, mm-hmm. and if next year is a good year, but somebody then says, "Well, I can't wait for 2021 to end," I'm like, "Well, remember 2020." Yeah, I think you can say that about everything. Well, yeah, or about. I'm anything, just saying yeah. that everybody says that about every year. Oh, yeah, but you can't say that after this year. <laughs> well, some people can. We they're just not our people, I guess. Word. <laughs> All right, Jilly, cool. quote of the day. Quote of the day is by Mary Davis. The more grateful I am, the more beauty I see. Simple, elegant. I love it. <laughs> and how about that take action challenge there, Jilly? Your take action challenge today is just to flex your gratitude muscle a little each day. I like that. Flex it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode. If you like this episode, please do us a favor and help us spread the message. You can do this by writing a review or simply by sharing this episode with a friend. And remember, sharing sparks a conversation. Conversation leads to action. And action is how we're able to live a happy and intentional as hell lifestyle. We want to thank you all for listening today. And we will see you again next week. See you later, y'all. Happy Thanksgiving.